The first time that I remember seeing large numbers of homeless people was visiting San Francisco, and so we're looking maybe 1967 and 68, and year after year, there were the same people sleeping on the same steam grates. And I was horrified. I, I could not imagine how a country could leave their own people sleeping in the streets year after year after year. So when we saw homelessness developing in the streets of my own city, it reignited those feelings and I could not let it go. My first memories of Judy are when she would be bringing somebody into our shelters. Um, this would have been in the 70s, but mostly I remember, you know, the dialogue, the questions, her curiosity, what makes people homeless, and what is it that is actually going to make the difference so that systematically we can get rid of homelessness. I really needed to understand what was happening to my city. Why were people out there? So my professors and my priests and my rabbis were living behind dumpsters. And I turned to them for information. I was director of nursing for the medical wards at St. Paul's, just as the HIV epidemic unfolded. And we had a monthly community-based meeting that started in the late 80s trying to address all of the issues that we were confronted with, one of which was housing. And at some point, Judy joined our group, and she was able to work in her own way, in her own realm with the city on raising these issues to a level of awareness that I think has brought so much action. During the 90s, we we're experiencing a time of welfare cutback, but it was also the time in the early 90s when the federal government pulled out of housing and the province on its own was not able to develop as much housing as it had before. And the number of poor people in need of housing in a city that was quickly becoming more expensive was much the cause of homelessness as well. And that's continued until today. The early 90s, I was working for City Hall in the tenant assistance program. So mostly we were helping seniors and disabled people, single parents, find better housing. And my boss told me that the time I was spending in the street was my personal hobby. It wasn't my work. And so I did it in the evenings, and I learned pretty fast that if you want to engage homeless people for any real length of time in their own world, when the world belongs to them, you go out between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the morning, wake them up, sit on the cement with them, and listen and listen and listen and just enjoy their company. After I had been going into the streets for a couple of years, I had been saying, I'm finding more people in the street, where I would find two or three, I'm now finding 10 or 20. We really need to be looking at this. And I was placated and told, uh, no, 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 no. It's all anecdotal. In the early part of the 2000s, homelessness was really increasing in the city. And with the exception of the nonprofits, people like Karen O'Shaughnessy and, and Lookout, um, there was really very little going on to try to deal with that situation. She was coming in, bringing people off the street into our shelter, trying to get them some assistance. And of course, we were able to help. So I'd been writing down everything that they said on little sticky bits of paper in the middle of the night. I took out all my sticky notes and I started arranging them. What would it look like if we could solve the problems one at a time that people had been telling me about all winter? And I got them all lined up and wrote it up as housing in one day. I 
took my one pager to Jim Diva, who at that time I think was chairing both the Davy Village BIA and the Davy Village Community Police Office. Like about 2002, 2003, we were inundated with homeless people in the West End. Uh, and business people were extremely upset. Uh, people that were walking the street, particularly seniors, were saying they felt unsafe. Then we formed a community group, and one of the first people we brought in was Judy Graves to explain from her perspective and the city's perspective the homeless situation. And I was extremely skeptical to begin with, like, oh, here we have some sort of a social worker explaining to us how we deal with the homeless situation. And, and she immediately sort of got us intrigued with the problem of the homelessness. I then took it to the welfare ministry, who came back very abruptly saying, no, uh, we're trying to cut the number of files, and what you're doing is case finding, and we have no interest in this. She was developing this program and, and doing this work where she would literally go out into the street, take one person, take them for something to eat, take them to the welfare office, get them signed up to income assistance, help them do that, and then take them and find them housing. And I remember saying to her at the time, but Judy, we've got thousands of people on the street. How, I mean, how is this going to work one person at a time? And she said to me, but Dan, that's the only thing that ever has worked. It became really apparent that there were other things that needed to be done. And while well, I'd done an unofficial homeless count, we needed an official count done, and the first count was done, I think, in 2002. When we coupled it with the second count, which was done three years later in 2005, we found a huge growth in homelessness. That was sort of the watershed when people started to take notice, um, the government started to, started to take action. That was a really important moment. In September, I was on vacation and I got a call from my office saying, uh, the provincial government wants to do a pilot project to get the people who are cut off welfare and living outside back on welfare and moved in. What would you suggest? And I went into the office and I got this one pager and I blew the dust off of it and I gave it to senior people in my office and said, see if they'll bite. And the next day I got a phone call saying they're interested, when could you start? And we started a pilot project on October 15th and Jim Diva was my wonderful volunteer for that project. We would get up at 6, 6.30 in the morning. I would meet Judy. Very cold winter days, normally raining, brutally cold. And we would uh, go out and find either one or two people that would find housing that week. And it was an exciting program. We'd go and wake two people up and say, are you on welfare? And when they said no, we'd say, well, if we got you on welfare, would you move in today? And they'd say, well, if you can find the housing, of course we would. And so we would do this. We would wake them up, we would take them for breakfast and stabilize their blood sugar. And the ministry office agreed to open up an hour early so we could bring our friends in. It could have been Prince William and Kate in a sleeping bag under the Granville Street Bridge. That's how much respect she treated them with. She listened to what they had to say. She empathized with them. And it was just a remarkable, remarkable process to watch. I love the walking. Part of my spiritual practice is walking the labyrinth and walking outside to find people who are living outside is very much like walking a labyrinth that you just keep following a path and following a path and wonderful things appear. 
I see Judy's faith as absolutely integral to the work that she does. She sees folks on the street as human beings who have a history and there are reasons why they are where they are and she understands that and is compassionate. Lots of people give lip service to that. Judy incarnates it, she makes it manifest. That's the way she is with people. You almost feel transported and carried when I wake someone up and they look into my eyes and welcome me to sit down beside them and listen to them. It feels like such an honor. Judy has been the conscience of our city when it comes to homelessness. She was the person who spoke to the public directly around her experiences on a, a nightly basis. And it compelled the public to uh, connect with politicians and say, we simply must do something about this as a city. My first walk with, with Judy was when I was uh, an MLA and serving in the legislature. She showed me a whole layer of, of uh, homeless people that I, I hadn't even been aware of in, right around us. And that was when ho homelessness was really skyrocketing in Vancouver. The, the numbers were going through the roof. When Gregor was elected to being mayor of Vancouver in 2008, the first thing he did, even before he was sworn in, was to gather a group of us and he said, all right, I've told everyone I'm going to end homelessness by 2015. I, I felt like we had someone with a breadth of experience and know-how to help us do that. Uh, I called Judy and, and said, okay, Judy, <laughs> now what? We told him the first thing we need to do because winter's coming is get as many people in off the street as we can. One of the first things they did out of the gates was ask us to go out and open 500 new shelter beds in, in about a month. And I have to admit, I had some real concerns about that. Uh, but Judy assured me that everything would be okay and this was the right thing to do. And, uh, and we went out, worked very hard for a month and got those shelter beds open. They could come in with their pets, their bicycles, their shopping carts. You can all come in. Just be here at two, there's gonna be a real good supper. And all of the shelters were completely full in two days. It was a whole new approach to, uh, to emergency shelters that uh, enabled us to get people in and actually build community. And it was the game changer for Vancouver, getting us on the path to ending street homelessness. The role of an advocate is to speak truth to power. I am not there as a bureaucrat. I'm there to say, there's something here that's important that you're not looking at. I'm there to say, there are voices for a constituency whose voice is very difficult, a voice that whispers. It's good to see you, I'll get a hug or what? <laughs> To me, one of the biggest roles that Judy has had is taking her experiences on the street and being able to take them to the, the boardroom and influence um, the decision makers. She's an advocate. She's an outreach worker in the streets. She understands research and how to do research on these issues so that it's credible and defensible. She understands policy and how to have her work influence policy. Homelessness has been an intractable problem across the country for many years now, and we just kind of got used to it being a problem we couldn't solve. And Judy has been uh, the person who's busted that up and shaken all of us uh, and said, we can solve this. Where we get lost in ending homelessness is overcomplicating what we're doing. And you need to come back to What's the real problem here? And solve it, one at a time. The most beautiful sound in the world 
is when I've moved somebody in to their own place and I've said goodbye and I'm out in the hallway of the uh, residential hotel and I hear the lock click and I know that person is alone, private and safe for the first time in probably years. And it's just a rush of, of pure success, pure happiness. Mm -hmm.